Hey guys, Lucas from iExplore here, and this is part two of our TT Artisan 21mm f1.5 review. In this video, we're going to do some architecture shooting in an area called Shiodome. So let's get right on to the video. I explore. All right, guys, so we made our way over to Shiodome from Tsukiji. It's just like a 10 minute walk. And Shiodome, we've shot around this area before. It's a lot of architecture, very clean, simple lines, which I think is great for this super wide lens. And I want to shoot. It's, glare is intense, but I want to shoot this spot, which is one of my favorite spots. It's a staircase, and then if you get people at the top, it creates for nice silhouettes. But right now, with the glare, I think it's a little bit intense. So we're going to move forward a little bit just to be in the shade, away from that actual intense glare. All right. And then what I want to do is wait for somebody to be at the top of those stairs to create a silhouette. One hour later. It's funny because just as we arrived, there was a bunch of people uh, on the top of the stairs there and then they vanished. Well, hopefully somebody else will come. One eternity later. But te technically, oh, there we go. Very nice. I almost missed it. I was looking in this direction, chatting with Axel, and he was like, look, 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 look. All right. So I was a touch late. I could have been a little earlier, but I think the first shot, yeah, the first shot in the set is fine. Very good. All right, and then a couple of people going up, so we'll give it one more try. So one thing I should mention is I'm deliberately framing this in this way. Ooh, nice shadow over there. So one thing I should mention is that I'm framing it in a way that um, I'm, I'm making the left side of the frame, that building, to be straight, flush with the edge of the frame, which means the other buildings are very angled, very dramatically angled. So anyway, let's, let's move on. I think we got what we came here for. And again, this ultra-wide lens, 21 millimeter, with the you know, aperture set to f11, it's very easy to do these kind of shots. I didn't have to focus it super carefully to get a very sharp photo. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the, at first, like I said, it, going back to where I said back in the beginning, it felt like this was going to be just a fun lens, not very practical to use um, because it doesn't have the electronic coupling and it's kind of hard to manual focus. And I know I'm good with zone focus. I've used it a lot, as you guys have seen in other videos that we've put out recently. But I also just thought it wasn't going to be that sharp, but actually it's mega sharp, stop down. I'll try to find, like it's getting a little bit dark, you can tell the sun's getting low. There'll be some shady areas around here and we'll do some wide open just to show you what that looks like, even though it's not the best subjects for wide open shooting. Let's go up here. Actually, wow, this is a pretty cool view right here. Hold on, it's got it lined up. There's this bit of sun shining off of the, that building up ahead, glinting, and it looks really cool. And I'm putting the actual sun behind uh, one, this, this like post here. So I'm not getting the actual sun into the lens. It's, it's creating this glow around everything. But it's, but it's shining off of different elements in my view here to create interesting effects. So yeah, not, not the, like, I often say this, it's not the most interesting photo, but it, there's something to it. I think from down here is better because I can create more leading lines with this uh, staircase around me here. All right, but let's, let's head up. This is, you know, don't need to spend a lot of time on this one. And yes, the child in me likes to walk up the ramp and not the steps, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Ooh, look at this, look at these shadows. Again, this is something where a wide lens like this, fantastic, because you can really see that all those lines expanding out. Beautiful. Get that girl's shadow in between there, in between the lines. A little bit overexposed. I'm going to go to minus one. Very cool. I really like this scene. And I can see these um, shadows reflecting in the glass. I'm going to get past this map. Wow. Oh, here we go, here we go with this dude. And again, the zone focus is great. I don't need to focus. It just 
it is in focus. So I actually made the, made the uh, focus a little tighter. Like I'm on F11, but I put infinity on F8. So I have like a little bit past infinity, so I don't have true hyperfocal, but I feel like that way I just know things are gonna be a little sharper. I know I'm well within sharpness. And then it goes all the way down to one meter, which is way more than enough for what I'm shooting right now. So yeah, very cool. I'm always a little paranoid with these mirrorless cameras because when I'm pointing it directly at the sun, it's, the sun's hitting at the, sen the sensor the whole time because the mirror's up, there's no mirror. Whereas with an SLR, it, you know the sensor's not being hit by the sun until you hit the shutter just for that brief moment. Although with an SLR, that sun would be shining into my eye, which is probably, if I had to choose, what should I damage with the sun? My eye or the sensor? I'd probably go for the sensor. I'm not 100% sure, but I have a hunch I would prefer to kill the sensor than my eye. So in that sense, the mirrorless camera does a good job, protects your eye from glaring sun like this. And it is very bright. Okay, let's see what we can do here from above. So here I'm probably not gonna do F11 because it's pretty dim in there. So I'm gonna do F4. And I'm just gonna take one right away because it's cool with those people there. But then I'm gonna zoom in. Yeah, and that's out of focus. So I'm gonna just focus manually by zooming in. I didn't, I'm not using zone focus here. And I'm just trying to get a really nice composition. Those of you who've taken the Tokyo Metropolis photo workshop will probably remember, if you did it with me especially, being very strict in this location about how to get this entire oval into the frame just right. And that's what I just tried to do right now. Let's try it again. Nice. This is a nice combo of people. Very cool. It's actually very hard to see anything on the, on the screen right now because it's so bright out here. Actually, now I can go back to F11, I realize, because it's so bright in this direction. And I actually want to go all the way to the bottom. And we're going to shoot up into this atrium and see what that looks like. It's all right. I thought, I honestly thought that with 21, I would be able to get the whole opening. But now I think you'd actually need something like a 14 to do that. It's not quite enough. Oh, there we go. That's kind of cool though. That was pretty cool. So there's a little bit of light up there that allows me to create a little silhouette, which I think is nice. That's pretty cool. I wonder if I could frame it to get that little space there with, where the people become silhouettes without these signs down here, because these are not so interesting. I'm just moving around. I'm trying to find an angle that works for that. And then of course we need some people coming down. Some people come in, maybe they'll come down the escalator. see them in the reflection. There we go. Nice. Very cool. Okay. I got something. As always, I got something. May not be perfect, but it's good enough. Yeah, this is a good example of just a quick zone focus. I just put that infinity mark on F8 like I've been doing and I just shot. I didn't have to think too much about exactly where I'm focusing because I'm on F8. Alright, I'm going to do some wide aperture shots around here even though I think it's not really necessary but just I want to talk a little bit about this lens optically when it's wide open. So if I take a photo of, let's say this pillar, right, and focus on the pillar itself to get it as sharp as I can. Well, that's cool, the train's going by and causing this. Wow, that's interesting. 
That's pretty cool. Okay. 1.5, 2, 2.8, and 4. So there we go. And then this way you can see the sharpness on the pillar itself and then the bokeh in the background. So I'm focusing on this seam on the pillar here. Yeah, these are all in focus with de varying degrees of sharpness based on the aperture. I'm going to do one more example. I was thinking to use this, this sign over here. If the, uh, the guards don't have an issue with that. It gave us like a, a weird look. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to focus on this lettering here. There we go. And I'm going to do it on all those apertures again. And it's going to be tricky for me later because, as I said before, the lens is not electronic at all. So it doesn't record any of the, like, aperture information into the RAW file. So when I look at these later, I can't see what f-stop I shot it at. I can just look at it and kind of guess. But I'll hopefully you put the right photos in the right space to, look, to show you guys the differences. Like I said, I didn't emphasize this aspect of shooting. We could have done this video at night. But I want to do it in the daytime because I really feel like this lens is just best in the daytime. I've used it at night just a touch because I do find it very tricky to focus. And um, it can certainly work for certain things. Um, like on a tripod, it'd be great. Even wide open, it'd be great for portraits where there's a lot of control. But as you guys know, I do a lot of street, I walk around, and so doing zone at f2 on this is possible, right? I mean, I do it on my uh, other lenses, like the 40 millimeter that I love, but it's tricky. So anyway, I kind of encourage you that if you like this lens, and we do have a referral link in the description uh, but you would you would get this for daytime stuff like this kind of architecture shooting or the kind of street photography we did earlier in Tsukiji Fish Market all right but long story short I am pleasantly surprised by this lens and how actually sharp and useful it is how easy it is to get the zone focus you know I've never had a manual 21 millimeter so uh, you know I never really paid attention how deep the DOF is and also I've, I've raved about this before but these manual lenses dedicated manual lenses have very nice focusing gauges so this, the numbers are very far apart so you can really fine-tune your focus which is something that AF lenses lack and so it's hard to get this just right okay so overall I'm happy with it I've been enjoying using it I think it'll stay in my kit for a while because it's small I can keep it in my bag or my pocket when I have a different lens on but sometimes I want to slap this on in fact I would say it's going to be a nice complement to my 40 millimeter prime because 40 and 21 work well together they're both manual so anyway basically i like it so guys thank you so much for watching um, please of course leave comments below and questions if you have any and i will do my best to answer them as i always say this wasn't a comprehensive perfect review of every single thing about this lens but i hope i gave you a good idea of what it's like to shoot with it so catch you guys in the next video and remember always Challenge your eye.